Having you just 
appreciated having food on your table. Y'all know this one. There's a room.
And Jesus is the only one that can lift those burdens. Hallelujah. You can leave here light as a feather. You can leave here knowing that God has met your need. Worship with Angela. Sometimes I'm discouraged.
more song, and I don't know whether we can do it or not, but it talks about if you want the Holy Ghost, you got to tell him yeah. what you want. You can't sit there with a closed mouth and closed hands and expect the Lord to bless you and to pour it out on you. But tonight, if you'll open your... Don't be afraid to open your mouth. Don't be afraid to speak out loud to the Lord Jesus Christ. And He will bankrupt heaven to meet your needs. Hallelujah. Such an end.
from a pastor, Pastor Brooks, that wants to hear Angela sing a certain song that you worship with her. How many know that when you don't know what to do, and when you can't see the end results, you still have to trust God? Yes. Amen. We may not know what's going to happen next, but we still have to trust God. Yes. Amen? I believe that you are God alone. But sometimes I still try to take control. When I don't see the end All you want from me is to let go
I thank God that we have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. And I recommend Jesus to people in these times. Like I said the other day, we're living in perilous times. The word perilous means dangerous times. The world don't know what to do. People of the world are saying they've never seen times like this. And I'm 72 years old. And I've never seen times like these we're living in. I've never seen everything shut down. Right by a park that's always open, closed. Everything's shutting down. But let me tell you something. That song they sung a while ago, Jesus hadn't shut down. God still got a royal telephone. Thank God that we can call him anytime, 24-7. Hallelujah. And his line is never busy. It's always, it's always hear our cries. Hallelujah. You know, I have no better sense than to obey God. I prayed today, and I even went and put myself on an altar that we have in the house, facing the east, and I've asked God to move tonight. He knows exactly who's here. He knows who's watching. He knows the need. But sitting right over there, God told me to preach tonight on the 12th chapter of the book of Isaiah. I was going to preach on something else. All day long I prayed off and on. And I thought the Lord was going to help me to preach on something else. But if you have your Bibles, and you know what? We have church here on Thursday nights. A lot of people have their church on Wednesday night. But it don't matter. I always call the midweek service the midweek booster. Hallelujah. About Wednesday or Thursday, amen, we need a lifting up. We need a boost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just need a little bit of heaven to come down on this earth. Hallelujah. Surely he's been coming down here tonight. Glory to God. The 12th chapter of the book of Isaiah, we are you saying? And I appreciate everybody that's here tonight. And I appreciate all those that are watching tonight. Hallelujah. In that day, thou shalt say, Oh, Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou was angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Hallelujah. Yes, we sometimes get God angry. Yes, we upset him by the way people live. And right now, I believe God is angry with the United States. I believe God is angry with the whole world. Amen. But you know what? I found out he won't stay angry. That's right. Hallelujah. Listen to verse 2. But behold, God is my salvation. Nothing in this world is your salvation but God. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also become my salvation. Heavenly Father, we thank glory to God. We thank you for the word of God. And God, I'm asking you, Lord, let the word of God come forth. God, let it have its free course. God, you know what we have need of. And I'm asking you, Lord, to anoint us. Now speak thy word for the next few moments. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I think I'll read it again and let it bless my soul. There's nothing no more comforting than the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible was written as men was moved on by the Holy Ghost. And I want to tell you something. There's nothing any better than the Spirit of God to comfort us in times like these. Let me read that verse 2 again. Behold, God 
is my salvation and I will trust. You know, it's still on our currency. It's still on our money. In God, we trust. I'm not afraid of what's going on because I know my God is going to take care of his people. Behold, God is my salvation and I will trust and be not afraid. Hallelujah. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength. Yeah. I've been asking God for strength. Yeah. You get as old as I am, you'll pray every day for strength. Yeah. And he's my song. Yeah. He also become my salvation. Verse 3. Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. I thank God for the fruit of the Spirit. Love. Joy, and I intended to not let anything take my love of God or my joy. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah! A lot of people have lost their first love, they lost their joy, they lost their peace. Yes. But we cannot let trials, we cannot allow tribulations to rob us of our joy. Can you say amen? amen. I want to read verse 3 again. Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. For in that day shall you say, praise the Lord. I want to apply it to this time, this day we live it in. We need to praise Him like never before. Amen. Hallelujah. Call upon His name. Call on Jesus in these times. You need to be saved. He'll save you. You need to be sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost. He'll do it. Call on Him. Declare His doings among the people. Yes. Make mention that His name is exalted. If we ever need to lift Him up, it's today. Yes. Hallelujah. He said, verse 5, Sing unto the Lord, for He hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. And I've always loved verse 6. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. I'm telling you, if you've got God in you, you got everything you need. He is your salvation. If you need water, He's your water. You need food, He's your food. But most of all, He's our salvation. And I will not be afraid. Glory to God. He's wonderful. We need to cry out and shout hallelujah like never before. It's time that the church lift up their voice of hallelujah and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We're not going to let anything get us down. Nothing is going to turn me around. <laughs> Glory to God. Matter of fact, in these last days, maybe we need to go to looking up for our redemption. Draw it nigh. God has warned us over and over in His Word. Hallelujah. That these days is coming. And I believe with all my heart we're living in the time of sorrows. Yes, I believe with all my heart, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ is soon to split those eastern skies. Hallelujah, he's coming. People said, I've heard that all my life, but well, he's closer than ever. Amen. For the signs of the times are here. Yes, they are. They're here. Amen. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. I love this scripture. This is what God said. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, it will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give our ear to his commandments. Commandment and keep all his statutes. Statutes is his sayings. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought 
upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Glory to God. For I am, God said, the Lord that healeth thee. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Brother Massey, what will you do if you catch the virus? I'll praise God louder. I'll call on his name. And I'll declare his doings among the people that God has healed. He has performed miracles. And he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, Lord, I go with you. of the world. <laughs> He's with us, Sister Marie. He's with us, Brother Johnny. I'm telling you, Angela, He's with us. Oh, I'll never leave you, He said. Glory to God. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They were cast into the fire because they were not bound to the image that the king wanted them to bow to. An idol. Uh-uh. They wouldn't bow. And I want to tell you, they wouldn't burn. Amen. God's going to have a remnant. He's going to have a people that's not going to bow. Hallelujah. I'm going to serve God. I made up my mind when I got saved years ago. I'm not going to let nothing separate me from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. You know the Bible says, I, I quoted this the other day, men's heart failing them for the fear of the things that's coming on the land. I, I want to tell you, somebody say you're faking. No, I mean it without a faith within me. I have no fear of this virus. I don't. I didn't have no fear laid hands on people that had AIDS when that was rampant. Jesus laid hands on the leper, lepers, the sick and the disease and never caught it. Hallelujah. And there's a lot of preachers doing all these times in past laid hands on people prayed for and never caught it. I am sealed Glory to God. The angel of the Lord encamped. That word encamped means live around those that fear him. The only fear I have is to fear him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People don't fear God. And I believe judgments come on the world today. Because if you'll read Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting in verse 15, there's a lot of disease, plagues came on people because of disobedience. Wouldn't keep God's commandments or his statutes and his sayings. And the wrath of God has come upon people. I believe this is nothing. People say it's going to get better. I said it's going to be like a roller coaster. There's something on its way. More is coming. It ain't going to get no better church. But we don't have to let it get us down. Can you say amen? amen. When I read this scripture, I felt the power of God. God said, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Hallelujah. Yes. No matter what the sickness, no matter what the disease is, God is a healer. Yes. Jesus receives stripes on his back for our healing. Every sickness, every disease, I believe he received the strike on his back for our healing. Isaiah 53, verse 5. And with his stripes, we are healed. <laughs> Glory to God. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Listen to what Jesus gave his disciples. And if you're a follower of Jesus, you are a disciple today. Amen. He gave them power against all unclean spirits. Glory to God. I read that today and I said, yes, there's not an unclean spirit that we don't have the power over Amen. in Jesus' name. 
greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. There's a lot of unclean spirits in the land. But I want to tell you, Jesus gave his disciples, he has given us the Holy Ghost. He gave power against all unclean spirits to cast them out. You and I have the power through Jesus to cast those evil spirits out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this. And to heal all manner of sickness. All manner of sickness. In all these years I've been serving the Lord, I've come up against a lot of sickness. But I've never seen God fail one time. He's always healed the Massey family. Always. Not every time when we call on him. But we keep trusting him. And he comes through. Hallelujah. I love this. And all manner of disease. Jesus gave the church power. Yes. Jesus told the elders, preachers, to anoint with oil in James 5 and pray the prayer of faith. Hallelujah. That we can be healed. I have seen, my family has seen I tell you all kinds of sickness healed. Miracles. Yes. Hallelujah. Now Luke chapter 5 verse 17 tells us this. And the power of the Lord was present to heal. Hallelujah. What we felt here tonight is the presence of God. And I feel his presence right now. I feel that power to heal right now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes, the doctor told you you have an uncurable disease. I know the people after people. The Bible said in Isaiah, declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Yes. There's not a sickness. There's not a disease that God will not heal. He'll set you free. I feel that power right now. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody's watching. Maybe somebody here tonight. I'm telling you why. Hallelujah. AIDS are bad. But right here in Lakeland, Florida, a young man stood up, testified to the people. He said, I used to be a nasty homosexual. I thought all homosexuals were nasty. But he said, I was a nasty homosexual. But he said, God set me free. He said, I had AIDS and God's healed me. I see people was healed. How about fact, I've had the privilege to pray with people that had AIDS. And they're healed. And that was 25 years ago. They're still healed. God don't halfway save and he don't halfway heal. He is the God that healeth thee. Hallelujah. After all these things, they come on the children of Israel because they didn't want to keep the commandments of God. You read it when you get home. Read the 28th chapter. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy. Starting in verse 15. And then when you get through reading all those curses and plagues and disease that come on the people. Even by mentioning the eyes and mentions the knees. That ain't nothing but arthritis. Oh, I'm telling you blindness and madness. I'm telling you a lot of things in there. The name them. But I'm here to tell you there's not one that God cannot heal. I believe every strap on his back. It was every healing that you can thank us. Yes, <laughs> Woo. Let 
Pray. Let me read to you. In 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 61 of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. And I'm sitting to close. 61 of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book. Wow. Somebody said, well, the Bible don't mention my sickness. It don't mention my plague or disease right here. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. All these new names just took care of it. Amen. There's not a disease known to man and the one to come, a new one. Come on. That's what he's saying here. Even those to come that's not mentioned. I'm telling you, no matter what it is, my God, he said, I am the God that healeth thee. Amen. I'm going to preach divine healing until the day I drop. Hallelujah. If I drop with a heart attack, God still heals hearts. I've had people to give me their heart medicine. I said, I don't want it. Go home and flush it. Next time I saw them, they said they flushed it. Hallelujah. And I'm thinking of one right now up in Virginia. And that's been about 35 years ago. He's still alive. God don't halfway save and he don't halfway heal. Amen. I know people that was hooked up and had to be dialyzed three times a week. Come off of it. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you when God heals, he's healed. Yes. Well, the doctor will tell you, you got to live with it. Yeah? Hey Amen. He's telling you the truth. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus receives stripes on his back for your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, every sickness, every disease that you can ever think of and those you never heard of. He is a God. Of God is at hand. Yes, it is. But yet, preach that He heals. Mm. Hallelujah. He gave us a power. Oh, I might want to preach this a little bit more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's jump back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. I was going to hold it for next time. Read Deuteronomy when you get home. Or are you home tonight? Won't you cut the television off early? Grab your Bible. Amen. Read Deuteronomy 28, 28, Deuteronomy 28, 28. <laughs> My daddy told me something. He said, years ago, if you want to get up, somebody wants you to get up at 4 o'clock go fishing. Or 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock. He said, in your mind, or you can take your finger, whatever, if it's four o'clock, write four on the wall. Or say it three times. I got to get up at four, four, four. Guess what you would do? You would wake up at four. Three times. My wife would tell him, Ronnie, don't let me forget to pick up something. or, or remind. You know, you, you got these reminders on your telephone now. That's for you rich folks. <laughs> I'm telling you, the modern technology, fantastic. So I said, what? She'd tell me, 
I said, all right, I'm going to repeat it three times. Guess what I do? Charmaine, I'm reminding you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, just do it for me. Do it around me. Do it for God's sake. 28, verse 15. Well, and read. You're going you to do some reading. Do it around 28. It's a long way there. But then when you get through, Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 through 14. If you'll keep his commandments, you're talking about blessing and everything he sets your hand to, he'll bless it. If you'll live right. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. I got to hurry. But it shall come to pass. It's going to take place. The judgment and the wrath of God going to take place if you like it or not. Somebody said, we ought not to be preaching. You preachers ought not to be preaching doomsday. You need not to be preaching the end time. Scared everybody. But well, some were saved by fear, pulling them out of the fire. And the Bible hated it to say they even hate that God responded with sin. It's time that preachers wear back on their heels and preach the unadulterated word of God. Jeremiah said, where is the word? Let it come. It shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord God. What is the voice of God? Your Bible. <laughs> to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these diseases shall come upon thee or you and overtake you. Mm. Hallelujah. God didn't just give us the commandments just to say we got the Ten Commandments. He didn't just say all these sayings just to be talking. He wants people to live right. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city and cursed shall thou be in the field. I want to tell you this new virus of amen is in the city and is in the country. Yeah. If you don't live right, curse it be you in the city and curse it be you in the field country. You cannot run from the wrath of God. You sin, you will pay. Vengeance of mine, saith the Lord. Verse 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever. What's the first symptoms of this new coronavirus? Fever. Right here in Deuteronomy 28. And it goes on and on and on. One place, maybe I'll, I'll look at it. Like I read it. If I can find it right here. Well, well, somebody shout amen. 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 I feel led the Lord to read it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It shall come to pass. It's going to come to pass. If we don't get right with God, Deuteronomy 28. How oh, Lord help me, Jesus. One more page here and I'll be at it. In verse 47. These diseases are going to come upon you in these plagues. If, verse 47, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. We can't let the devil rob our joy. You got to get saved and serve God with joy. Joyfulness. If you don't serve God with joyfulness, these plagues are going to come on you and with gladness of heart of the abundance of all things. It could be worse. Thank God. Thank God for what you do have. Amen. And let me tell you something else that's going to come on your children. Now, my son ain't going to be with a bent lip or wrist. You better watch what you say. 
Yes. Listen in verse 54. Homosexual mentioned in Deuteronomy 2, 54. So that the man that is tender among you will dedicate his eye for evil towards his brother. The spirit of homosexuality will get on your children if you don't keep God's commandments and his statutes. Amen. That's possible for everybody. Amen. Yep. Yes. Your grandchildren will turn out to be homosexual if you don't serve God and keep his commandments and statutes. I'm telling you, it'll pay us to hearken diligently unto the word of God because all these curses have come. Not just in New York City, not just in the large city, but in the back towns of Kentucky, Georgia, the little towns. Because listen, said, Cursed be thou in the city. Cursed shall thou in the field, the country. You can't run from the life, the, the wrath of God. People say, well, if I could just move to the city. No. And then those out in the city, if I could just go out in the country, I'll make it. I've had people tell me that miss the rapture. He said, if I miss the rapture, what I do, I just find me a little land with a fish pond on it. Because you ain't going to be able to buy, sell, trade. Yeah. One day, people are going to go to Publix, Windex, or Walmart, no food, no can, no bread, no meat. And you're going to have to have the mark of the B666. If you don't have it, you ain't getting it. But if you take the mark of the beast, you're going, going to hell automatically. It's time preachers preach. Amen. It's time that we warn people. Yes. Yeah. People never seen rain before either. But Noah preached it's going to rain for 120 years. It never rained on the earth. God told him to build an ark. Come on. Jesus. And then one day it started raining. And the waters kept getting higher and higher. And here they came to the ark. But God closed the door. Yes, yes. I can hear him now. Noah! I'm your friend! Well, why didn't you repent? Amen. Noah! Let us in! We're drowning! Yes. Why didn't you repent? Flood came and they all drowned in the water. He ain't no, we we see a rainbow. God letting us know He'll never flood the world again with water. Right. Certain places, yes, but not the whole world. You know what's going to be the next? It's going to be fire. Fire is going to fall from heaven and burn everything up. You don't want to miss the rapture. Blessed are they that hold me and have part of the first resurrection. Yeah. Lot, he didn't move into the city of Sodom, but he moved into the wall. Now the walls were wide. Bible scholars tell me that you can line up six chariots across them that were so wide. That was their defense from the enemy from getting in. The walls were wide and thick. They would throw boulders at trying to bust through the enemy. But Lot, he didn't move into the city. He moved in the wall. And that's why a lot of people, they're not in the church. They're straddled. Right. They're not in the world. Right. They're not in the deep sin like homosexuality. But they still lie, fornicate, Commit adultery. Right on the line. They love God. They go to church. You can't serve two masters, Jesus said. But God sent two angels to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible said every man's mind was continually. But God sent two angels to preach. Get out. Get right. Get right. Get out of your sin. Get right. 
They wouldn't do it. And God rained hell, fire, and brimstone and burnt that city, both of them up. And you know what's there? Because of Lot's wife turned back, she turned to a pill of salt, and there ain't nothing there but salt. Not even a blade of grass. Judgment of God is coming. Yes, yes. But this time it ain't going to be more water. It's going to be fire. Yes, right. Fire. But you don't have to go to hell. The Bible said hell is not for you. Amen. You can repent tonight. Get right with God. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? And then, hallelujah, the good news is, hallelujah, you won't have to receive none of these plagues, none of these diseases. I believe with everything within my heart, how he will keep his word. He'll keep these plagues that he said he would brought them to the Egyptians because they were hard head, stiff neck, they been hard hearted, and they wouldn't repent. And I want to tell you, judgment came, and America will not repent. Amen. One day they're going to cry for the rocks to fall on them because they want to die, and but death won't come because of the wrath of God. Today's the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Jesus wants to save. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. I'm glad that one day I made that decision. And got right with God. Hallelujah. Thank God. He'll keep you. He said he would. All these diseases and plagues that came on the children of disobedience. He said, I keep them from you. You know, that better pay you to serve God. Then one day, Gonna be snatched out of here. Jesus said, I'm going back to prepare a place for you. I was preaching not too long ago. They advertise a place for mom. Well, I tell you what, Jesus got a place not just for mama, but for everybody. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going back to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. No sin in that place. You got to be sin free go to heaven. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. And that bird that my wife had for somebody here or watching, I want to tell you if you call on him, he'll lift that bird. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's stand. If you're watching, why don't you just find your place to pray? I pray for the sick here.